Now here's a topic that's been discussed at the United Nations, the CIA, even Britain's House of Lords, but you probably don't expect this burning issue to be UFOs. Well, today the UK released more than 8,000 pages of previously classified documents which deal with the sighting of unidentified flying objects. The BBC science correspondent David Shukman has been pouring through the pages and he filed this report. A few ghostly lights, secret military investigations fuel for endless curiosity about whether we're alone. The latest official documents, some heavily censored, record dozens of apparent sightings, like this strange cloud pictured in Sri Lanka. But they also offer reasonable explanations, including that sometimes it's just a hoax. It might have been that the Martians had landed. The police were taking no chances. In 1967, the discovery of six of these in southern England triggered a massive alert, but turned out to be a student prank. Though the authorities remained on the lookout. Obviously, it was taken seriously, because simply because, not because they believed that we were being visited by aliens, but because they were worried that there may be some other terrestrial explanation for some of these things, such as, you know, sort of Russian spy planes. It's one of the longest-running conspiracy theories that glimpses of alien spaceships have been covered up. But this huge release of MOD documents proves nothing, and already further questions are being raised. Was the logbook recording an apparent sighting by a Royal Navy ship really blown overboard? And why is the entire file about an incident in Suffolk in 1980 just missing? The suspicions will continue. One man told the MOD he'd been abducted by a UFO and gained an extra hour. But it turned out to be a night when the clocks go back. Something about aliens leads to wishful thinking. David Shukman, BBC News. Well, for more on the tracking of unexplained events in the sky, perhaps no one is better able to speak on this topic than Bill Burns, the host of the History Channel's UFO Hunters. He joins me now live from Philadelphia. Welcome to the program, Bill. Um, the thing that surprised me most about these documents is that the government, the British government, government agencies, even bothered compiling them. Would you agree with that? Yes, I would. And I think that's one of the most important things, that uh, when people say, oh, the government says that they have no bearing on national security or we really don't track these things. This is not true. The release of the MOD documents this time and the prior release of the MOD documents prove that the British government, as well as the United States government, uh, these governments are actively tracking and investigating all of these sightings or incidents. But are they doing that, as the report implied, because at the time of the Cold War they thought that what they might be dealing with were some form of Soviet incursion? That's part of it, I'm sure. I mean, even going back to 1947, one of the earliest thoughts was this could have been um, a Russian plane, a, a secret Russian craft, perhaps a Nazi plane held over from World War II, or even a Japanese uh, balloon bomb that uh, these were launched on the United States during World War II. But the level of technology and the kinds of materials that were recovered at Roswell showed that it was something other than a conventional craft. Now, with all the threats facing the United States and, indeed, Britain today, turmoil in the Middle East, uh, Islamic extremism, terrorism, you name it, are you telling me that there are still people today in government agencies looking out for this stuff? Absolutely. Um, for example, one of Britain's most important and, and controversial UFO incidents took place in December 1980 at RAF Bentwaters, a NATO nuclear weapons base. Here, despite the fact that both Britain and the United States publicly turned away from this and kind of ostracized the people involved, the records show and the witnesses explain that there was an active Air Force investigation that British agents from one of the clandestine agencies interviewed neighbors in the area and that the British and the United States actually were talking to each other about the incident. And then 15 years later at Cosford, there was a huge flying triangle that the RAF noticed, that the uh, National Weather Service in Britain noticed, that people on the ground, police officers noticed. And the British sent a memo to the United States Department of Defense saying, listen, is this craft one of yours? And the U.S. responded to the Brits by saying uh, to the Ministry of Defense, was this one of your craft? 
So clearly, the British and the United States, despite their public face on this, were actively investigating this sighting in 1995. Bill, uh, you, describe, you are described as a UFO hunter. Have you ever come across anything in your work that genuinely made you think this could come from a different planet? Well, let's put it this way. Yes, it could have come from an otherworldly place, <clears throat> is a better way to put it. Sure. I mean, when you talk to witnesses at, uh, from RAF Bentwaters and you see the landing impressions, the plaster casts of the landing impressions in, in the hard sand in Rendlesham Forest, that tells you something. When you look at the official RAF uh, and United States Air Force uh, analysis of the soil that was ten times more radioactive mm -hmm. in the landing spot than in the outside forest, that tells you something. When you see soil from Kansas, right. in the middle of okay. Kansas, that's something that tells you that too. Okay. We're going to have to leave it there, I'm afraid.